In a follow-up to the LickTech series of AIOs, Enermax has released the LickTech 2 240 TR4 cooler. And while I reviewed the first one positively, is everything all roses with the second one? In fact, is it still all roses with the first one? What's up guys, Jeff here back again for Modders Inc. And like I said, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new LickTech 2 240 TR4 all-in-one liquid cooler from Enermax. The packaging is nearly identical to the previous versions, as are the included accessories. A very nice braided pair of hoses, a pair of Enermax fans, thermal paste, and this time a splash of RGB on the very well-built CPU block. Installation is again pretty straightforward, as the LickTech 2 uses the built-in mounting screws on your Threadripper TR4 socket. And I'm gonna get into a full review of the LickTech 2, but I also wanna talk about both coolers in general and some problems that have risen up with both of them. In my first review of the LickTech 280 TR4, I was getting some temperatures on my 1900X Threadripper that just didn't make any sense. I was idling around 55 or 60 degrees and climbing into the 80s under load. An Asetek 240mm AIO was outperforming this cooler. So after a fair amount of troubleshooting, I contacted Intermax and had a replacement sent out. The replacement cooler performed admirably, and I went forward with my review. These things happen sometimes, and as long as the manufacturer makes it right, it's typically not even worth mentioning. But as I was preparing to review the LickTech 2, I stumbled across a hardforum.com post complaining about leaking and corrosion in all versions of the first generation LickTech models and early rollouts of the LickTech 2. This was confirmed by an Intermax rep in the forum post. Digging a little bit deeper, a quick check on Amazon reviews of the original LickTech finds 42% of people have either had leaks or corrosion and similar performance numbers as I was experiencing in my first review. Now, Enermax in that forum post did say they would replace all LickTech Generation 1 coolers and early rollouts of the Generation 2 coolers. But all that being said, I can no longer recommend the first gen cooler as obviously I experienced issues myself with it and there's a fair number of issues out in the wild. But what about the LickTech 2? Well, let's get this thing installed on my Threadripper 1900X first and see where the performance lands us. Let's get started. So we'll get to the official results here in just a minute, uh, but I did see something at the high-end test that does bear taking this apart at least a little bit to see if there is any built-up corrosion, even in this brand new out-of-the-box sample of the, uh, the LickTech 2 here. Uh, I'm gonna throw the graph on the screen right now, but you see these little bumps in the chart? That to me says there's something that's not quite right about this cooler. Um, normally when a, a liquid cooler equalizes, it, it's a nice flat line graph. This one had bumps and had a variance at the top end of up to six or seven or eight degrees Celsius, uh, where it would spike in temperature and then level back out and then spike in temperature and level back out. And that's not a typical result that I see. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna just open the fill port on this real quick. I'm gonna see if there is a, uh, any corrosion on there. If there is, we'll dive a little bit further into it. And there is already a very, very slight amount of corrosion on that. And this is a brand new out of the box sample. Uh, this has only been in use for an hour, maybe. I, I put it in the system, tested it, and pulled it right back out. So that's not an encouraging thing to see. If you can see on the tip of my finger there, a little bit of that uh, yellow gunk that's pulling off of this. I don't think that's normal. try to do this as in focus as possible. Um, so this is the uh, the base plate. This is the copper plate that goes down onto the, onto the processor. And these are all your micro channels. There's a little bit of like a gel substance that's collecting right in there. I don't know what that is, um, but that's uh, interesting to say the least. And I will say there's, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a good shot of this or not. Along this edge, there's a whole bunch of black tarnish um, that I don't think should be there in a brand new out of the box uh, uh, base plate. So this is gonna be way too small for the camera to see, but there's a little white speck on the tip of my finger right here, uh, right there. Um, that was actually blocking one of the fins in here and it separated the fins. Uh, you can see 
this fin right there is a little bit wider than the rest. Um, it actually had a small blockage in it. Um, it looks like a grain of salt or something, so certainly not clean. But not enough to call corrosion either. But I will say, the block itself seems very, very nice. Um, it's solid copper, it's got a ton of uh, micro channels cut into here. The gasket didn't want to let go on the edge and actually left part of the gasket behind. And one of the complaints of these blocks is they eventually start leaking. Uh, so I'm not sure if they start leaking from this gasket or if it was one of the hoses that gave way. I, I couldn't really get any good info on that. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of reports of these things failing. Um, and I saw some kind of erroneous numbers in my testing here today on a brand new out of the box unit. And I saw some erroneous testing on my first unit uh, that, that came via the Liquitec uh, version one. So, I don't know. <laughs> so there we go, one fully reassembled uh, all-in-one liquid cooler. Um, while I didn't find any damning evidence of corrosion in this, uh, there was a little bit of tarnish on the micro fins on the bottom of the CPU block, and there were some little floaties in the water. I'm not sure if that's 100% normal, but it's certainly not something I would like to see. So would I recommend the uh, Liquitec 2 240? Um, I don't think so. Uh, and, and here's why. No, number one, the, the temps were okay. The temps that I was seeing were, were fine. Um, I don't think the 240 is capable of having the 500 watt of heat dissipation that the box claims, like the 280 and the 360 claim. I think the block itself could handle 500 watts. Uh, the, the fins were very, very dense and, and seemed to be capable of that. I don't think the radiator support is there. And honestly, these fans, they, they didn't have a great sound when they were at 100%. And at 100%, they couldn't keep my 1900X under 80C. Uh, so good block or bad block, it really doesn't matter if you can't keep an overclocked CPU under 80. I, I don't recommend it. So was there corrosion in this block? I didn't see any corrosion. I did see some discoloration on the copper that I didn't expect, a little bit of tarnish. There was a slight blockage uh, by a very, very tiny particle in one of the fins that had actually widened the fins. So it's like it got wedged in there. Uh, and there was like this gelatin-like substance that was kind of accumulated on the top section of the block. Um, I don't know if that's normal. Uh, it doesn't seem normal to me though. So, eh. It's unfortunate because I do like the Intermax Liquitec series. I liked the Liquitec 1, I liked the Liquitec 2. Um, it's unfortunate that we're finding out that these things don't last as long as they claim they should. Uh, obviously, whenever you're mixing metals, you've got aluminum for the radiator and copper for a block, there's a chance for galvanic corrosion. And it it can be prevented in some cases, but it seems like in this one, uh, Intermax just kind of lost on that bet. If you have a Liquitec version one, go ahead and uh, check the video description for a link to Intermax's website. They are offering an RMA for any first gen Liquitec coolers. As for what I'd recommend, well, here's hoping that Liquitec version three turns out to be uh, a little bit more reliable. Thank you so much for watching this one, guys. A little disappointing news, but uh, hopefully Intermax will make good on their promise of replacing all the affected models. But uh, anyway, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Modders Inc. if you haven't done so already. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.